National Assembly Speaker Nosibiwe Mapisa Ngakula has been instructed to appear before the ANC's Integrity Commission. This is over allegations that she pocketed 2.3 million rand in kickbacks from a military contractor during her tenure as Defence Minister. Mapisa Ngakula, who is on special leave now, has filed an urgent court application to interdict her arrest with the ruling expected next Tuesday. The ANC has got an ethics management and integrity management process as part of its renewal initiative. Comrade um, Nusiviwe has been um, asked to meet up with the leadership of the Integrity Commission, which is led by Reverend uh, Frank Chikani. I'm sure South Africans know the caliber of those people that serve on the Integrity Commission, both the National Disciplinary Con Committee as well as the Integrity Commission. Um, and I think that South Africans know the caliber of those individuals and that uh, matters are going to be handled with due care, but we say without fear or favor, regardless of uh, the position that the person occupies in the public space. And political analyst Professor Kedibone Pacho, who is the director of the Northwest University School of Government, joins me now. Good morning, Prof, and welcome. Thank you very much for your time. Mapisa Ngakula is the head of one of is head of one of the three branches of government, occupying a position of great significance. How would you describe the position the ANC finds itself in in relation to the integrity of really high ranking members who are finding themselves at the centre of serious allegations? Good morning, uh, Iman, and thank you so much for having me, and uh, good morning to the viewers at home. Um, you are spot on uh, in terms of describing the position of uh, Mapisa Ngagula in this particular case. She is a very uh, important person. Uh, South Africa is a constitutional democracy, and we use that uh, because we have the three arms of government, uh, the judiciary, the legislative, uh, where she is now uh, heading the National Assembly, one of the key uh, institutions of uh, parliament, and of course we've got the executive. So this position she holds is very important in making sure that we uh, uh, hold our democracy uh, as, a, as a nation and that we are able to understand and do checks and balances uh, amongst the uh, the, the, the various actors uh, in the in the in the state. So she really wields a very powerful position, and we have to be very careful in the manner we understand uh, these developments. Well, should the public then expect, Prof, a more robust response to the news of the case against her, the search and seizure, uh, and the possible arrest? The ANC seems to be deferring to process. The president said the process should be allowed to unfold uh, for there to be reliance on the NPA, the police, and the courts to do their work. We heard um, also from the ANC that she will be going to the Integrity Commission. Is this position enough, given, as we've just described, the gravity of her position, and in a context which we'll come to just now, where, you know, some have said there is a trust deficit in the ANC in holding its officials to account. That is true. I think ANC is really struggling, uh, but we know in the recent past they managed to get rid of some of the um, high-profile individuals that were also implicated in this kind of uh, 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 issues like Ace Mahashwili uh, comes to mind. And, and, and so we hope the integrity uh, committee of the ANC will be able to apply uh, its mind properly to take uh, the, the Speaker of Parliament task. But that is one thing, and that is a political process. I think, in, on, on the other hand, uh, there are two issues. The first issue is that the institutions of uh, the state, especially in this case, the police and the uh, National Prosecuting Authority will not just depend on the public perceptions around what is happening, but they need evidential uh, information that they can present to the courts. And that is really where the, uh, 
uh, Chaya hits the tar with the, uh, uh, that really will say we have a an accountability system that is functioning and that is able to make sure that even the most powerful will be held to account. But the last part, uh, uh, Iman, for me is that we need leaders who do have uh, who should have their own uh, integrity. Uh, in checks and make sure that they question themselves and to come to this point uh, and we know that we've got many of these kind of uh, uh, individuals and this situation that people have accepted that the level of corruption in South Africa should be accepted and it is it has become so pervasive that uh, the the bar is so low and uh, it becomes the, the the norm. So we need to find a way. I know the National School of Government has a program uh, on the on the uh, uh, sorry a, a framework on the professionalization of the public sector. So hopefully that would also kickstart a program that will assist to just conscientize public officials on the dangers of getting involved in corruption because it is very dangerous to our democracy. Prof, just on that point, in terms of professionalizing the public uh, service, and, and a thought occurs to me as you're saying that, um, the way these appointments are made, uh, you know, these are, these are comrades, uh, have been comrades in arms, deployed to these positions, uh, not always uh, in, in terms of the requisite skills matched to, to, to those positions. Um, you almost get the sense of entitlement uh, to some of these positions. Um, in the particular case of uh, Nosibiwe Mapisa Ngakula going to court to interdict any possible arrest, and you read through that 94-page, uh, uh, you know, s submission, um, you know, some of the areas around uh, not wanting to be humiliated or kind of the narrative of exceptionalism that applies there. That certainly shouldn't be in, you know, in a public service mindset or attitude because you are there to serve at the, at the pleasure of the public. You are there to do what the public needs you to do. So just talk to us then about how sometimes these, uh, what we would describe as entitlements, um, really stand in the way of ensuring that you are still there, you know, serving the sacred and higher purpose of the people. Yes, correct, Iman. I think we... Uh, we we need to engage much more robustly on the questions you are you, you are raising because we've seen this script we've seen this movie before and the people will play a Stalingrad kind of politics and uh, just interdicting any possible uh, allegation against them and that will waste uh, taxpayers' resources and, and, and time when they know actually that they have done what they are alleged of and that is very said, especially if it is from the, the, the leadership. But the other part that you are raising, which I think is quite significant, is that the, uh, uh, our uh, people in the public sector generally, in the leadership position, there are those positions that are very political in nature. And Mapisa Ngakula or the, 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 uh, the, the uh, people in the National Assembly, in the National Council of Provinces. So those are very pure political uh, positions that uh, we, uh, uh, we elect political parties and political parties nominate uh, those kind of uh, people to represent us. So I don't think we should be worried too much about whether... Uh, these are the kind of people who do have skills. Of course, we need to be concerned that they will be able to process the, the, uh, uh, the laws that are passed through that. But what is important in this case is that when people are in these high profile positions of being a speaker, of being a president, of being um, a, 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 a deputy speaker, they need to understand the fact that they are now at a very uh, serious leadership positions, uh, that they are at the helm of advancing public policy positions of the country, and so their conduct and even what they say matters a lot. And for me, if we these kind of individuals who occupy these positions, that their role is not, uh, once they are elected in these kind of positions, they 
then need to realize that the manner in which they address themselves, the manner in which they conduct themselves, the manner in which they interact with members of the public, even in private spaces, is quite important because this is where the professional conduct needs to be uh, displayed. I want to end with um, something uh, to, just to close, and this is the action, um, and this was also during her de the days as Defence Minister. Uh, we all recall, I think it was around 2020, uh, Mapisa Ngakula disciplined by the President for that incident where ANC members were ferried or hitched a ride on, on that plane to meet with members of the ZANU-PF uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, she, you know, she had her salary docked and so on, and the President said that she, he wasn't going to take further action. Yet after that, she is appointed to this high-profile position. Veterans League President Snooki Zikulada said the ANC should not allow um, tainted individuals to stand as, uh, as representatives of the party in any of these sort of leadership um, capacities. He also spoke about a trust deficit in society and the NEC last year of the ANC in, in, in February of 2023 talked about those, for example, in a state capture, those who had been tainted uh, you know, should really go to the Integrity con c Commission and, and a year later not everybody who, who was had appeared uh, before the Integrity uh, Commission or voluntarily, you know, kind of put themselves up. Where does this all leave the ANC in terms of really being committed to taking action? And this is a question we've asked many times, actually, uh, Professor, we've had a con conversation mm -hmm. about this. How does it, does it really lend credence to their integrity and their stated objective to ensure um, that, you know, corruption and themselves or those who are tainted with corruption uh, are, are, not, are not associated? Yeah, so two things from my side, uh, Iman. The, the first one is that I think that, as we know, the ANC is embattled and really struggling to deal with issues of corruption within its ranks, uh, both in uh, uh, rank and file members, but also in the leadership, uh, various leadership structures in, 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 in regions, in provinces, and, and also in national, that there are just way too many people in the ANC that have been fingered uh, that they are uh, involved in, in, in corruption. So I don't think that they do have the capacity at this particular point in time to really uh, clean their house in terms of uh, who should be representing them. So that is the first part at a political party level. But for those who represent us, those who are nominated and put on the party list to, to, to the legislature, to parliament, to uh, municipal councils, to uh, provincial legislatures, I think they uh, and this may be a little bit controversial, that the IEC needs to up its ante in uh, tightening its rules to say political parties who do not screen their members and that are found to have these members with very serious allegations of this nature are tainting our democracy and maybe they need to have, have a demerit system to those political parties because mm. we can continue to have institutions that are not serving South Africans, but that are serving a, a, a political party. So I think IEC must also be taken into oh. account on, I mean, this is not an exception. There are many other people that we know, are mayors, are uh, this and that, with very, some even with convictions, but they, that, that they are serving in these legislatures and some in the executive. So yeah. I think we need to call IEC to, to, to help us on this part. Prof, I really like what you said because, in a sense, it gives the public recourse. I think there should be a public service demerit system. I don't know if we've talked about this before. It's been raised. I really like that, and I think we should have another fully-fledged discussion just on that theme alone. But I want to appreciate you this morning for sharing your insight and perspective with us, Professor Keriboni Pacho, who's the head of uh, Professor and Director for the School of Government Studies at Northwest Universities.